right, we'll call this meeting of the Board of Directors of the American Humane Society for order at 6.31. Oh, no, I pulled it up on mine. Don't know it by heart. Our mission is to serve animals and people by offering programs that promote animal health and responsible pet stewardship and foster compassion for animals. Um, we'll start with a moment of silence for Tucker, the chicken who passed away. update uh, 7:31. a revised reimbursement policy was approved by majority vote on august 15th a revised board of directors application was approved by majority vote we'll move on to the shelter director report right god that was fast all right <laughs> so let's start with numbers and I deeply regret that this will be the last month that I will be presenting this report. And that we'll have a shelter supervisor to <coughs> next time. So the thing that I've, I've not made friends with animal shelter manager with regard to the reporting, and I'm sorry that I act like I look at this report sometimes for the first time when we're here, and it's because they throw the foster numbers in there, which sort of, um, I think, creates a little bit of a, um, a skewed version of the animals that we take in and the animals that go out in a shelter. So. I have provided for you the true intake number for July and the true outcome number. Um, we took in 67 animals, and those were owner surrender, strays, transfers, and two animals that were returned from adoption. Um, and we sent out 69 animals, including animals who were <coughs> strays who were reclaimed, um, one animal that we transferred out of our care, and animals who were adopted. And I did run an inventory report for August 1st. Um, as of August 1st, we had 60 animals total who were in our care. Um, there were 12 dogs and there were 48 cats. A lot of those are kittens that were in foster care. Um, and, of course, cats that are off-site, too. Does anybody have questions about numbers? Okay. So moving on to my report. Um, the two star things really under development for me for the past month is that I did resume the direct mail campaign. Um, the spring mailing is now the summer mailing. It's the same thing season mailing, um, which is still very, very relevant. And um, I sent out 48 letters today, actually, they went in the mail. Um, trying to work on this every week. Um, last week I did not get any letters out. I started preparing envelopes, so um, until we get Willis on board, it looks like probably about every other week I'll be able to send out a batch of maybe 40 or 50 letters. So we'll keep it going to that extent anyway. Um, other big news, the fall newsletter. Um, I wish that you could see the copy that they sent back to me. It's beautiful. Um, it is going to print next week. Um, realistically, I'm hoping that we'll have it in our hands and ready to mail out by the end of the first week of September. Um, the cover story is the 100th spay neuter story. Um, We've got photos that are just gorgeous all the way through it. And there is a save the date ad for the silent auction on the first page, and then there's also a full page insert for the silent auction too. So the fall newsletter looks great. Um, of note also, um, in terms of media, the Christmas in July event, um, the results of the event were covered both by the High Timber Times and the Flume, <coughs> and the event was also advertised beforehand in the High Timber Times. I think maybe the Flume, I'm not sure. Um, also, Karen Carrion, who did Massage for a Cause, we had three things that were going on July 28th. One of them was um, the Christmas in July event. Um, one of them was the Mountain Dollar Grand Reopening event in Evergreen, and we had we made that an adoption event. We had puppies there for adoption and um, volunteer staffing there, too. 
And then um, new supporter, Karen Carrion, who adopted a kitten from us recently and who is a massage therapist, was also holding a benefit um, at the Conifer Medical Center and offering massage for a donation. Um, I'm sorry, uh, offering massage for a fee and giving proceeds to um, Intermountain Humane Society. I actually saw her today. She stopped at the shelter. Um, she said that she didn't get very much business, but she's trying not to be discouraged. It takes a while for these things to catch on. And I told her if she communicates with us on her dates, we'll continue to advertise them for her. Um, but she did get $55 for us, which is nice. And she's holding our donation can too, which is great. Um, and her event was also advertised in the High Temper Times. Um, and I wanted Kathy to know this also, Dr. Dave. I did send thank you cards to Aspen Creek Vet Hospital and to BRCC's ophthalmology department for the pro bono services that they offered us. Um, also, I got a phone call from a representative from the city of Lakewood. They have on their city's website um, a couple of boxes where people can look at opportunities to volunteer. Some of them are with the city of Lakewood and some of them are what they call external volunteer opportunities and asked us if we wanted to be listed. So, yes, of course. Um, so I sent him information to put up on their website, so we'll be advertised there too. Good. Um, shelter operations, which has really been the thing that has consumed me the most since the last board meeting. Um, the big news, of course, um, Nicole Willis accepted our offer as the shelter supervisor. She's gonna be relocating here from Oregon with her husband and her little tiny dogs, and she's going to begin work at a shelter on Tuesday, September 11th. Um, until then, Brandy's continuing to help out a lot. Karen's last day was Friday the 27th. Um, she ended up having to leave pretty abruptly because she got another full-time job that she started that following Monday, which was understandable. So, um, Christmas in July. Um, we took in, I think, maybe a little bit of revenue after the sale. I had counted um, $2,094. I think Deb has some results on that that she'll report, but it came to over $2,100 altogether. We sold a bench after the fact and maybe some other things as well. Um, we will be participating in a dog adoption event at um, the Aurora Pet Smart location. It's a three-day dog adoption event. They wanted to do this event at first around the clock, literally all night long. <laughs> and they were prepared to have their staff there overnight um, when we were not able to be there. And they have since changed their minds. Um, the event's going to run from 10 to 6 all three days. Um, I'm going to have Nicole actually work this event. Um, I think this is going to be a great way for her to get um, interact with some of our really key volunteers. Um, the Zales have continued to be really active with the shelter. They're fostering for us right now. Um, Lisa and Autumn um, came out and helped quite a bit during Christmas in July. And they're, I talked to Lisa today, too. She's going to help with this event, too, and Autumn will, too. So. Um, when is the dog adoption? It's September 14th, 15th, and 16th, and it's at the Aurora Pets Mark. I'm not sure, but I'm going to find out before this event starts. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you keep going toward Kansas? Come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is something that the, there are several locations that are participating in this. I think regionally they're trying to adopt out 2,200 dogs. They have a very big goal. They're going to get a lot of media <coughs> coverage on this event. Of course, we'll get as much coverage as we can on it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a three-day thing. Um, I've got Sloan on board for this one, and I've got um, a few of our star volunteers. My goal is to have at least four or five dogs there every day of the event. We're actually able to house our dogs there overnight if they're unadopted. Wow. Um, so that works out well. It's a little bit easier than I am to from schlepping back and forth. Um, I was fairly excited about <laughs> being able to help out the Fort Morgan Humane Society when they called us and said that they were overwhelmed, they needed some assistance. Um, they also <coughs> adopt out kittens on all their vet and um, so I was excited that we had an opportunity when we had space to take some kittens from them until <laughs> those are the kittens that turned out to have lesions that look like green ones <laughs> in our clinic upstairs right now. Um, cultures are pending on those. Um, unfortunately, they had been in the main cat room for a couple of weeks. We have a lot of volunteers now, and a lot of people touched those kittens and touched every other cat in the cat room. So um, I organized a fairly intensive effort to remove every cat from the cat room yesterday morning. Um, with six of us there doing this, we were able to, in less than three hours, remove all the cats from the cat room, strip the entire cat room, bleach the entire cat room, set it all back up, dip all the cats, and put them all back in the cat room as a preventative measure so that we protect our shelter population. So, um, Where'd you put the cats? In the van. Oh. <laughs> Pulled it right up, and Bernard had it ready with um, 16 crates. Um, 
clinic has done 132 surgeries to date. That includes sterilizations and other surgeries, mostly sterilizations. And since the last board meeting, we have had 70 volunteers that have gone to orientation and started working at shelter. Marta, um, do you think it would be beneficial if I made something to send the white wave as a thank you for all you do for us? Yes. Always in favor of thank yous, and wow, what a generous <coughs> contribution this is to yeah. Those newsletters are gorgeous. That's a really valuable relationship. Who, I, who cultivated this? Was it you, Wendy? Um, it was when I was there. Trish had come in to adopt a couple of kittens, and we actually advertised in the current newsletter that I was publishing at the time, which was, I think, a Word document. <laughs> right. <laughs> and published um, for Please, a newsletter editor, and she saw it. I, I just have to say, too, that I got the newsletter from my old shelter, the Cleveland ATL, um, last month. And I looked at it and I was like, God, ours looks better than this. <laughs> and they've got, you know, actually a budget for theirs. Wow. And, and it's, it's a nicely done newsletter. And if I remember it, you know, it's glossy and it's pretty, but ours is, ours is really, really nice. We have a better writer. <laughs> that, that's what it is. I do have one question on the with the um, kittens from Fort Morgan. Yes. Do we have a um, procedure in place, a policy in place for dipping cats or kittens that are coming in, or is it just the high risk areas that we, we might have be just doing expanded that? that procedure as of um, this week? I think um, our procedure has been to um, dip on arrival any cats or kittens coming from Denver Animal Care and Control. Okay. Um, we've successfully transferred in cats from Arc Valley Humane Society mm -hmm. and from. Um, Duncan's Place and from the Silent Angels group and from other places. Um, this was our first experience with Fort Morgan Humane yeah. Society. Um, you know, it's stressful on the cats to be dipped. Um, not something that I like doing. I think it's absolutely necessary in the case of member animal care and control. Um, given this experience, um, I think if we accept any more animals from Fort Morgan Humane Society, we'll absolutely dip them on arrival. Um, I, I don't know what your thoughts are, Dr. Dave. I don't know that the other shelters that we've taken cats from successfully without having a problem. I don't know, you know, unless yeah, I'm comfortable I, with the sanitation and procedures at Art Valley Humane Society. I, don't know that I, would I think we ought to dip anything that doesn't have contraindication. Like if they're sick, they just had surgery, or they're on medication, that type of thing. Or their um, geriatric. Um, and you, you mean transfers, right? Not necessarily yeah. owner surrenders. Okay. Well, owner surrenders too. I, I, I think wow, okay. that would be a good idea. Everybody. Um, I think the problem is that it's just out there lately that we're far from the shelter that has had a problem with the patient. And it's just, uh, it's just out there. We have to deal with it. I was going to say this for the operations thing, but I would again, like last time, ask everybody, don't freak out. It's rainworm. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll handle it. We'll get through it. You went through and did it in, what, what did you say, three hours? Mm -hmm. But it seemed to take other people three months to do. So, uh, you know, it's no big deal. It may be, it may not be. We haven't gotten back to positive cultures yet, but it looks like it. So. Um, if it is, we'll handle it, and it's no big deal. And I would hope that everybody would adopt that attitude and not freak out, because it's not going to freak out. <coughs> is the fact that this is a very warm summer, I'm just curious if he has something to do with I don't know what, what's going on, and it's just rumor. I haven't really talked to anybody in authority at the Denver Municipal uh, and at Foothills, I heard, was having so far, knock on wood, at Max Fund, uh, nothing, although I did get on my desk a, a positive report from anyone, but it's always there. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't noticed that it's worse than usual, but I don't always handle those cases at Max Fund. So. But I, I have heard rumors that, that it's bad in town, so we're catching up. Fallout from it, and that's okay. That's what mm -hmm. part of being shelter is all yeah. about. Yeah. The risk. It's something that happens. And for program that doesn't have to be you know, taken care of. You know, we're just out there to get it as soon as 
Yeah, so too, I think we do a pretty good job at that. Yeah. Um, in certain cases, it, it can be stressful. I mean, it, it's not a hundred percent. There is no hundred percent set of medication, and that includes the learning sulfur death, But it's relatively safe. And so, like I say, what I would like to see happen is if there isn't a strong indication against it, that every cat comes in the shelter uh, at the time they come in because they're every step in the cage. Do you have an age limit? I told them not to dip my bottle babies, but I took home. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> and, and so you know, I, I, I wouldn't yeah. let Brandy dip the babies. There would definitely be and an age limit. I'd yeah. say probably. Yeah, maybe later than that. I'd be careful with that if they any age as far as you know. How do you typically? At least we. I dunk them completely all the way up to the neck, and then I sponge over to make sure I get the bridge of the nose, so basically the whole cat. I mean, we do artificial tears in the eyes, but I make sure I get the, the whiskers that come from the eyes and the mouth and the ears and everything. So in, in younger, the tiny kittens I'm wearing, if it would be... Maybe just kind of sponge them? Yeah, just feasible to okay. do that. It would give them something that would be able to totally get them. Right. Nobody but, that hasn't been weaned yet. Okay. Yeah, which, which I, mean, eight weeks, I don't so. recall us dipping anybody that hasn't been weaned. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Scudder, what do you think? Since uh, you're here, we'll take <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marty had just done one that just came into the shelter that was weaned and was pretty young. and It did okay, but it did get a little cold. They always get cold. I feel, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they shiver, and you know, we were getting up, you know fluid packs and stick them in there, and then we're trying to, you know, let kittens pile on each other for once. And we all know how quick those guys can go with any kind of stress, so, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, I would vote um, nothing less than at least eight weeks, and I, I want to say 12. You're talking about bulk dipping as opposed to just lightly, or at all? Everybody that comes in from DMOS is under eight weeks. Yeah, yeah they're calling us, the ones that they consider at risk are under eight weeks, so. It's, yeah. So are you thinking, you're saying 12 weeks without any, or? Well, that's, that's too late. That's well, I'm too just much. wondering um, if, if they use, instead of full dipping like she's talking about, just use a the sponge to where they're not saturated. Um, and then maybe get some of the some price bags or heat, which would be great if they were taking a little longer. So what? Rice packs. Rice packs. Rice packs. Rice packs. Rice packs. So, you know, there's there's pros and cons, and it's debatable. It's the bottom line, so I don't know. I mean, it's a short-term <coughs> discomfort for them, but... In the, in the interest of efficiency, is this something that the operations committee can talk about and give a recommendation to Marta? Sure. So that we don't spend a, too much time. Yeah. And just the rice packs, is that, I and mean, could we just fill two socks with rice and time? I mean, can it be that simple? Um, I don't know, I've mean, just seen made out of like canvas or something like that, heavy material. Oh, like, heavier? And I think it's because it helps retain the heat, maybe. I mean, oh, we could okay. try two socks, certainly. I didn't think about that. I don't see why it would work. I, I so had a doctor any recommend that. that we to me. Put it in a tube sock? Yeah. I was just thinking that would be a really cheap way to. Mm -hmm. To make a bunch. It's a good idea. Give it a shot. Okay. Thanks, Will. Uh, next up is the fundraising committee. Next meeting's Tuesday at Deb's house. What time is it? 6 30 or 6? I can't remember. I think it's 6. I think it's 6. What is that date? Do you know offhand? Uh, 21st. 21st. I think our goal is going to be to get the letters written and start sending those out for um, collecting items for the auction. And I did have a uh, call from the person who's been flirting with donating something to us for several months, but we did get a call Sunday, I think it was Sunday morning, 
Um, and she's going to donate her one week condo down in Cabo San Lucas. Is that the name of the place mm -hmm. in Mexico? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a beach person. <laughs> but um, it's the only thing is it's for one. It's actually for eight days. You'll be there seven nights, um, and it's. Can do you remember? It was either December third or December 9th was when it's from a Monday to you check out on a Monday. So we can talk about that at the meeting too and get something out. And, you know, I'm not quite sure how best to dispose of that, whether we do something special, whether we do something with a silent auction, because I think the silent auction <coughs> being the 20th or thereabouts in October, really close to that December date. And we have to give them the name of the person who gets the, um, the, the week so that she can coordinate with the people down in Mexico. So I hate to go back and say, we didn't have anybody get it. So mm -hmm. I just, there's a little bit of risk there. But do you know what the value is? She said... She said it was 320. She, they also have a hotel room, hotel rooms there. It's very pretty. We checked online. Um, actually, today she was supposed to drop off. I forgot to tell you. She's going to come by and drop off information about it. Um, but she said it's that the rooms are cheaper at the hotel. But she says that the these units are rented out at like 320 to 340 of, um, a night. Personally, so I don't know how that's really. Is this like a two thousand dollar package or something? <coughs> You can say that. <laughs> I don't know. I think I don't even have the information from her. She said it was two queen size beds. I have a feeling it's one bedroom. I don't think it's going to be two bedrooms with that. And I don't know if it's two bathrooms or one bathroom. So I'm hoping that's the type of information she's going to, she's going to drop off. Or I'm going to have to call her and try to get more information from her. So maybe an online auction. Yeah, it starts I don't, right away. Possibly <laughs> or possibly a raffle. Yeah, yeah, but even a raffle that's pretty specific. That yeah, I mean you know a lot of people. You know, they may not even buy a ticket because they're not interested in the prize. I don't know. I, I figured we could talk about it Tuesday, but I mean, I'm, I'm glad we got it. It's just, it's, you know, I want to make sure that we do something with it. Yeah, yeah. Revenue. That's right. And don't want to have a, you know, turn that into a sour experience for them, too. It doesn't give people a lot of time to buy a plane ticket either. No, that's right. So that's why I'm thinking we need to do something maybe earlier. So if anybody wants, you know, knows of people, I started to let people know that I know of that, you know, even across the nation, it doesn't have to be somebody here that might be interested in that. We can do an auction or something. Nice price, though. Um, the other thing is just to get back to the silent or the sidewalk sale. Um, I did the numbers. I finally caught everything up. I was gone for two and a half weeks and um, caught all the books up with the receipts and. We had a 44% increase over last year's Christmas in July, um, and I wasn't even here to buy yet. <laughs> but Natalie told me they still have things up there, so we may have more coming through on sales. But um, that was adding both these, I'm going to call it sidewalk, sidewalk sale, but the sidewalk sale plus what was in the thrift store. The thrift store, I believe, had their number one day, is what I think Daryl told me. And at the thrift store alone, including you know the donations that came through with the cash register, they had 800 uh, they had 700, uh, what was it? I think it was $808 this year. So, something just over $800. A so. whole lot of that was Marta cleaning out the, well, a sizable chunk was Marta cleaning out the shed and we sold a bunch of crates and dog dishes. Oh, good. And stuff. Cool. Great. Excellent. Whew. And did you have anything else on the fundraising? No, I think we need to touch base with Rebecca because she was keeper of the spreadsheets and we need to make sure that we work on getting those updated as well so that people know who they're contacting. Yeah, I thought we were doing that on the drop box, but I guess we can talk about that on Tuesday. I thought each of us were going to go in and do that. I drop haven't box. even seen her post anything to update. I can't even get into Dropbox, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're having a meeting on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, Tuesday, 6 o'clock, Deb's house. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Next up is the grant committee report. Um, we submitted on August 1st the uh, grant request for the Anschutz Family Foundation. Um, and we just received the, the annual letter from Bates. And we're beginning to gather all that information together to submit that. Scott and Marta did a great job helping with the Anschutz grant request and wrote a really great bunch of information that we can uh, start to use to apply for other grants that they can put together a really good story. So, 
thank you guys so much for that. And I think as we talked about too, it's a matter of recognizing these as they come up. I mean, I would like to know how much money we're spending on quality and repair. Um, it's a pretty compelling story to you. Trying to take pictures that can go with them too is important. So I'll be mindful of that. Uh, yeah, we have um, some security cameras um, that were purchased several years ago um, that have never been installed, so we'll be working with Ken to get those uh, put up in the um, office and around the shelter. And uh, the only other thing is um, we cleaned up Mitch's email account or removed Mitch's email account since he's left the door. I don't have any comments. Unless there's questions. Operations Committee Day? Really, not a whole lot new. Uh, Holly, what Marge is referring to, is she, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember her, uh, Quizzer, uh, went through hepatic lipidosis and fought real hard, finally pulled her through. Uh, Holly, over our slippers, uh, is going through the same thing, and thanks to the wonderful work by the staff. She's responding, she's eating on her own, and uh, uh, doing very well. So, uh, kudos to the staff and for all of you, for Holly, and to the thrift store, too, for catching the fact that she was sick to begin with. Is there a known cause for that, or well, are it's, contributing factors? It's more a secondary thing. Something starts, gets you sick. And then they stop eating, and because they stop eating, they go through a weird physiological thing with the liver, and they get fatty degeneration of the liver. And they die from it uh, a, good, a good part of the time. And that's why it's such a, a great thing that we got her turned around. And it was due to not only the efforts of the staff in treating her, but the um, thrift store staff, too, in, in catching the fact that she was sick to begin with so early. Because um, I think that's what helped is to get this kind of early in. So if you can pass out and run for them, um, that would be great. I can't think of anything else. Marta? Dr. Ham? Thank you. Fun part, Wendy? No falling asleep, you guys. <laughs> All right, July 24th, process payroll paid bills, recorded the sale of the Exxon stock, and reconciled the Fidelity account, reconciled the checking account, reconciled petty cash. The July 28th, process payroll for hours that were left off of the timesheet and paid bills. July 31st, paid bills, completed transfer of funds and PayPal and reconciled that account. Updated our restricted funds worksheet and completed the transfer. You'll see that we're getting lower on our uh, restricted funds. 32.30.58 is what's left right now. That's all in Spanier, Foster, and Pedicaid. It's somewhere around 2,500 left in Spain, neuter, five or 600 in Foster, and then just that little bit in Pedicaid. So, Matt, yeah, I guess you want to keep that in mind when we're writing for grants. It's it's awesome having that Spain, neuter money there. Okay, and one of the um, programs that has run out of money is SNAP, or yeah, the SNAP, the special needs, and then also the STOP, which is our shelter transfer outreach program. <clears throat> and again, on the 31st processed, the July 9, 41 to withdraw on 8-14. August 6th processed payroll and paid bills. August 9th, <coughs> prepare financial info for the Bates Foundation grant request uh, that Matt mentioned. August 13th, paid bills. August 14th, reconciled checking restricted savings and raffle savings accounts with no comments. Reconciled petty cash again, posted uh, adjusting journal entries for July for the non monetary, non -monetary donations. We received um, estimated value of goods around 2195.37. And I think that's the highest that we've received in one month, not yeah. counting that month that we got the huge All the food. food. Yeah. So you guys must have taken in a lot of goods. So going over the PL, 
Um, and for those of you who haven't listened to this before, I just compare our actual PL to what we have budgeted last year for this month. So our membership and a don donation income is lower than projected. I had a $3,000 grant, um, hopefully written in, because we had received one from the Eleanor Baker Patterson, Patterson Trust two years ago. We didn't receive it. Matt, do you have any recollection about this one? Did we submit? Um, I think we were declined. We got a, we got a letter in December. It was December. back in December. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the sales, including the thrift store and fundraising, were 1100 higher than budgeted. Shelter program fees and the vet service program income were higher by about 1700 Investments did take losses for the second quarter and were posted in July. Supplies and materials <coughs> don't affect the budget, and that's that 21.95.37 of goods that were donated. So overall, we had 25.59.40 less than we had budgeted. On the expense side, the vet service program went over by about 300, and animal services over by about 700. And those were items that we had talked about last month that we were expecting. We had some emergency treatments and um, some additional spay and neuter costs <coughs> that month. Fundraising expenses, including the thrift store, were under by about 200. Uh, GNA was over by 1884.99, and that was primarily because we paid the CPA this month for the taxes that she filed for us. We got the bill. Um, payrolls under by over $1,000. Mileage was over by, that should be $22.10. Um, the supplies and materials don't affect the budget, but they're listed on the P&L. So overall, we were a little over 2000 over budget. So, and then just so you can see, we had budgeted for 1841.78 profit, and actually it was 2766.43 loss. So we were off by about $4,600 on what we had budgeted for the month. And we had a lot of out of town and other personal commitments, so the finance committee meeting was postponed this past month. We'll be back on it next month. Um, and then just a couple of things that I kind of wanted to bring to people's attention. Um, and I'm sorry for this being in landscape again. Uh, looking at the PL year to date. So the profit and loss previous year comparison, January through July, you can see just we're doing light years more <coughs> than we were at this point last year. So while we're a little bit short on where we wanted to be with the budget, we're still doing much better. And also the thrift store is continuing about a 13% increase over last year. Do we have <clears throat> enough, are we starting to get enough history to be able to um, modify our budget? Is that something we need to look at doing? <laughs> we wouldn't modify for the current year, but we'll do things differently for next year. Okay. So I think that we'll be able to use the numbers for this year to make next year a little more accurate. Okay. And since we didn't really have much to go on? No, there was just such a shift in how things were done and right. expenses and who was doing what, you know, paid versus volunteer, that it was really difficult to put numbers together for this year. But I think by next year it'll be much closer. interested and so she came to the board meeting tonight and I think we're going to ask her to stay 
after the meeting. Good to side questions. <laughs> and, and Pam also has shown a little bit of interest. I don't know. Last I heard, it was a little bit of interest. So um, <laughs> she she came tonight to check it all out too. So make a good impression. Mm -hmm. for the two. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I don't. Pam, if you had questions, you're welcome to stay, and we'll do real quick answer any questions you might have. And, this is not bad. Um just one thing, um, Wendy and I will be out of town for the next board meeting. So we need to find something to take notes and that stuff. And I'll make sure to have everything prepared and sent out beforehand. Um, some of you know more of the thrift store people than others, but Kathy Banks is the person who does more up there than anybody except Daryl. She's going in for major surgery this Wednesday be out probably at least a month, probably more than that. She's the one who does all the beautiful displays of everything, so if it doesn't look quite as spiffy as it normally does for a while, that would be fine. <laughs> I got two cards I would like you all to sign, Good. because she's going to be out so long. One is for right away and one is for later, but probably before the next board meeting. And if anybody wants to contribute for flowers, we'll probably be sending flowers down. She usually does this for anybody in the, in the thrift shop that's had any kind of issues. And I'm not as good at it as she is, but <laughs> yes, you give are. it a shot. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> so if you guys can sign the cards, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So Natalie, in terms of volunteer coordination for the thrift store in the interim while she's out, should I send those, um, who should I field those to? <coughs> Me and Daryl. You and Daryl, okay. Yeah. And is there a meeting Saturday? No, we're not, we're foregoing a meeting this okay. month. I'll still email okay. the financials so you guys have them. Okay, that would be good. You um, said that Kathy's out Wednesday? Her surgery is Wednesday. Her surgery is Wednesday, mm -hmm. okay. I'm not sure if she'll be there Tuesday or not. I wouldn't be if I were okay. her looking forward to that. But um, And also, Sharon Sowers is not working in the thrift shop. Currently, she may decide to come back next month after she deals with health issues. But it was primarily because of the chemical stuff that she brought to the board before. So we are real short people. If anybody knows anybody whose arm you can twist, do it. Sure will. Do you have certain shifts that are open? Like, do you know what Sharon was working before? She was working Wednesday and Thursday afternoons. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of shuffling around. But currently, David has uh, worked a lot of extra and close to <laughs> times because I'm sure. And Martha. If there's, uh, if you can identify um, a best time, whether it's you know just on a week-to-week -week basis or just in general for volunteers to start, um, I mean I'm happy to step up my role in reaching out to initially the volunteers who might be interested in the first store. Just coordinating with you and determining start date and who to hook them up with for training and anything. So let me know. I okay. can be helpful in that regard. Okay. I'm almost always there Tuesday and Friday. Okay. And, um, I don't know anyone's schedule up there. <laughs> I'm, well, it's, it's on the I just sheet. talk to you all the time. It's, on the, mm -hmm. it's kind of on the sheet, I think, with the phone numbers. Oh, is it? I, oh, I think okay. so. Well, I, I haven't looked at the last okay. one. Maybe it was. Uh, I'll, I'll get you something that I will give you a hint, but it's up in the air. Well, as, as applications on. come in, you and I can pow wow and then we'll see. <clears throat> Hey Natalie, I wanted to just tell you those signs that you know on the uh, van, they're the red. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't better. miss those. <laughs> I still haven't finished the red for the other side, but oh, okay. See, I'm always seeing it up this yeah. direction. Yeah. Well, I took the green one off the other side to. Do oh, okay. Right. 
or red on. I haven't decided. I met a man in the shelter yesterday who's lived in Bailey for 15 years and didn't know that there was a humane society there. Wow. Until he saw the banner. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, it's, it's helpful, you know. All those little things. Any more you All right. I'll call this meeting of the board of directors to close at 7 Thank you.